Guess what this is? I bought another guitar from Amazon. That's right. So today we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna review it, and we're gonna tell you if this, you ready for this? If this Amazon Essentials branded guitar is any good. So stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store, linked below for some custom designed t-shirts. So that's right, we're at it again. If you haven't seen the first review we did of a guitar we purchased from Amazon, you definitely want to click the link up there. That is probably our most watched video we've ever done, and it is what I like to call <laughs> accidental comedy. We did that guitar video because I saw a lot of guitars coming into the store from people who unwittingly purchased something online that they thought was a good deal. When they came to get it restrung for the first time, they found out that one, it wasn't a good deal, two, the restring would probably cost more than the guitar, and three, the guitar was falling apart already and probably wouldn't survive. So, you know, that's kind of a buyer beware, a public service announcement that we did. And it was hilarious just because of some of the aspects of the guitar. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. But I was intrigued right before Christmas. Uh, so this was weeks ago uh, at the end of 2020 because as I was searching on Amazon, I saw an Amazon branded acoustic guitar available. Uh, now, before I had a chance to purchase said guitar, it was gone, sold out, removed, I don't know, what have you. But Thankfully, it popped up again, and I was able to order this guitar. Now, we are going to unbox this guitar and do a review for you today and see, is it any good? The guitar costs about $139, and it is branded as Amazon. Now, I've heard various things about Amazon Basics and Amazon Essentials and what Amazon may or may not be doing to sellers on their website, and uh, I, all I can say is once I bought some Bluetooth earbuds, and they were a good deal from another company, and then they disappeared, and then those exact same earbuds looking the exact same way, costing more money, were branded by Amazon. So I don't know what's going on there. But that is the deal with this guitar. It is Amazon branded. And we're gonna see, first of all, actually, if it survived. So this box I have not opened. This is how it arrived. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of concerned for the guitar because you can hear it's just kind of rattling around in there. So hopefully it survived. It's kind of still taped. Um, the box has definitely seen better days, but let's see what we see. And yes, I have a knife on me because as I said before, this is Texas, y'all. Someone once said, maybe you should just shoot the box open. <laughs> We're not, well, okay. So Amazon Basics is on the box of the guitar. And as with most things from Amazon, if you order anything off of Amazon, you get your item and a lot of air in the box. So we'll take the actual guitar out and it's, it's box as well. So hopefully it did indeed survive. And forests everywhere thank Amazon for using boxes bigger than they need to. All right, so here is the actual guitar box. Amazon Basics, beginner acoustic guitar with strings, picks, tuner, strap, and case, spruce, and mahogany. And then of course it says that in a number of other languages as well. Made in China. Um, you know, I was curious who made this guitar for them. It says manufactured by Guangdong Kapok Musical Instrument Company, Limited. So I'm not familiar with them. They probably make a bunch of instruments for a bunch of different companies with different names on the headstock. That tends to be the name of the game with guitars made overseas. A lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time. So these guitar boxes are pretty typical. I wonder who makes the actual guitar boxes because just about everybody uses these exact same box shapes. They're probably the ones, if it's one company, they're the ones making money. OK. 
Okay. Good news, it is a guitar. So, it's survived. It's packed like most acoustic guitars that don't come with cases. Stuff that we get in our warehouse, so. Nothing atypical so far. Get some bubble wrap. And we have some accessories. So $139. Now this is a lot more expensive than that first guitar we reviewed. That first guitar we reviewed, CA or Crescent, it comes under a few different brand names. Um, it was about 40 bucks with all of the accessories. Um, and it was, well, watch the video. All right, let's see what we got first for the accessories. So we've got a folded up piece of paper. Has battery warnings, tuning, warranty information to obtain a copy of the warranty for this product. So no actual warranty information, just how to get warranty information. And some instructions on how to change strings and how to adjust the truss rod and how to clip on the tuner. So that's nice. And let's see what we got. We've got... Um, well, that's interesting. <laughs> so, we, so we've got strings. So that's nice, and a new set of strings. We got the label for the guitar um, out of the guitar, and it's not a sticker. It's just just the interior label of the guitar um, in the bag. That's I don't I don't get that. That's weird. We've got a variety of picks, um, and all of these are normal sized picks in a variety of colors. They kind of feel like they're all about the same thickness, same material, just different colors. But that's nice of them. Better to send me, uh, see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, half a dozen normal sized picks versus one giant one that I can't use. We've got a strap. And this is a, a not great strap, but I guess it works, right? It does what it needs to. It's kind of narrow, but yeah. What do you get? What do you want? You know, $139 for everything. We've got our Allen wrench. This is for adjusting truss rods, by the way. If you ever bought an electric guitar, or acoustic guitar, and got a bag with this in it, that's what it's for. It's for adjusting your truss rod. And then this nondescript white box is holding inside a nondescript white tuner called the KFT-01. Probably Google and see who actually makes this. Probably the same company. Battery's not installed. And that's good. So sometimes your battery's in installed, but it's got a clip um, on it. It's not saying which side's positive or negative, so we'll just trial, trial and error. Okay. Comes on when you clip it on, so there's little pads down here, and it turns off. Hey, that's actually a good idea. Tuner manufacturers not having an on button and having it just come on, but I wonder if it times out. Otherwise, you can't just leave it on the headstock. I don't know, we'll find out. All right, we got our gig bag, and let's see if it's a slight, slightly better than the gig bag on our previous purchase. Again, this is probably three times, four times as much as that first one. This is not bad. Okay, it looks like, it feels like it's kind of kedora like material. Um, the zipper's kind of cheesy, but it's not broken right out of the box, which is what happened last time. So that's good. There's no padding at all whatsoever, so this is really just going to protect from the slightest bumps and scratches that you might have while carrying the guitar. And that is all that it will protect you from. This is hilarious. I love that the label's not in the guitar. Okay. Now, to the meat and potatoes of the matter. Take that little hairband off. I don't wear them. And let's get to... Oh, man. I was really hoping the headstock would say Amazon on it. I was really, really hoping it would, because that would have been funny and cool at the exact same time. So 
So this paper, if, you're, if you've never bought a guitar that was already boxed, uh, is typically on acoustic guitars in order to keep the strings from corroding while it's being boxed and shipped and so forth. So there you have it. Uh, this is a steel string acoustic guitar. It's kind of a round shoulder dreadnought shape. It's all gloss. Um, it's got pretty cheesy tuners, but pretty typical for kind of uh, the price range of, you know, $200 or under, mostly under. Um, $150 guitars tend to come with these tuners. So that might be the weak link we'll fee see when we go to uh, put it together. I have no idea what the fretboard is, but it is wood, and it's got these kind of pearlescent dots on it. Um, so, yeah, actually not displeasing. And I'm just trying to visually inspect to see if I see any issues right off the bat. There's a, a some tooling and manufacturing marks around the perimeter of the headstock. Some roughness around the nut, but again, nothing that would be unusual in this price point. There aren't any sharp frets, and it's kind of interesting as to why. The frets don't come all the way to the edge of the fretboard um, at all. Um, so I guess that's one way to not have sharp frets is not to extend the frets to the edge of the fingerboard, which is weird. Um, but nevertheless, everything else looks pretty clean. It looks it lo survived the very bad packaging job, so that's good. Um, it's got a ding on the back of it. I didn't put it there. And everything else looks really kind of clean. It's uh, it's a heavy gloss finish. You can really tell, if you're ever curious, you pick up a guitar, if you look at the neck joint and there's some buildup there, it, it'll give you an idea of exactly how thick the finish is. But this is an all laminate guitar anyway, so I really didn't expect it to be super resonant. Um, the bridge is indeed some variety of wood, um, probably the same as the fretboard. Can't tell what it is. I don't think it's rosewood. The inside looks really clean. It looks like they actually did a fairly good job so far. You can see a bit of mess inside, but overall not too bad. It's mostly right up around the sound hole, right up around the, the truss rod, which may or may not work. Um, and the rosette is very classical guitar-ish on an acoustic guitar. So it's kind of weird. I don't know why. And this is, this is uh, I'm going to digress a little bit, but uh, I grew up down near the border to Mexico. If you ever went over to some of the markets, they would have like kind of the knockoff action figures when I was a little boy. So I wanted like, you know, Batman and Superman came in kits, but Batman, he was like yellow instead of blue or black. And I don't know why, but that rosette just kind of strikes me as like steel string guitar with a classical style rosette is kind of how that hits me. Anyways, we're gonna tune it up and we're gonna see one, does it implode? And two, how does it feel? And how does it sound? Because that's what's really important. So well, we're gonna use the new tuner. So let's check it out. Well, I'm curious if it times out because if it doesn't time out, that's actually a really cool design. Tuners are so the tuners are kind of all over the place and kind of chunky feeling. So if you ever pick up a guitar, you'll feel this twice, two different ways. You either pick up a guitar that's really cheap with really bad tuners, and as you start tuning it, you'll feel the tuners won't. They kind of don't seem to have the same ratio. One tuner, you kind of turn a lot, and the other tuner, you barely turn, and it moves the post. Um, and there tends to be kind of this chunkiness to it. It almost feels like there's binding in the gears inside the tuner. You'll either feel that on really cheap tuners, or you'll feel that on really old guitars that haven't been well-maintained, so. There's that chunkiness again. Now, if you heard that little ping, see if I can. 
that was the string caught in the nut. Now that probably means one of two things. One, the, the string has been sitting there for a while, but two, the nut's not the nut slot for the strings is not cut very well. This happens on guitars all the time, even some more expensive ones. So if you ever hear that little ping when you're tuning, that's what that is. And you can usually lubricate the nut, but ideally it, it should be cut correctly. Because it'll lead to tuning issues otherwise. Okay, we've drifted on the low E now down almost to, you know, it is actually an E flat. So it's a sharp E flat at this point. Now that's not totally unusual. Um, and we're already at E, that's how little ratio you have on these tuners. It, that's not completely unusual um, on a new guitar because the strings stretch out a little bit. So I'm gonna take a moment and we'll use, you know, kind of fast forward through this point and stretch these strings out and try to get them in. I was going to stretch this trick out. <laughs> Hang on. I don't want the bridge ripping off on me. Um, and I can't tell if that was the bridge moving or the bridge pin. If the strings were properly seated, the bridge pin shouldn't be moving either. All right, let's see if we can tune this without it ripping apart. All right, it's in tune and it's staying there. So all in all, so far, great progress. Um, let's check the action on this thing. And it's a bit high. So we're going to check neck relief and the neck has a little too much relief. So here's what I'm gonna do. And this is typically not something I would recommend that you do if you don't know what you're doing. But I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I'm gonna see it needs adjustment, but I'm also kind of curious if I can adjust it. Too many times these guitars have a truss rod almost for appearances sake. The truss rod doesn't really work, but I should be able to use this Allen wrench and tighten the truss rod. Now, if you don't know what the truss rod is, the truss rod is a rod that is adjustable. It's got a nut on one end and, and it's anchored in the neck underneath the fingerboard on the other end. By tightening it or loosening it, you're able to create a bow uh, to remove uh, or allow relief in the neck. So the string tension is going to pull the neck forward. You can basically bring the bow in the neck by bringing, bringing it back by tightening the truss rod. So let's see if it actually works. It moved. Now we're gonna check tuning again. I'm gonna leave this on and see if it turns off. Okay, so the relief is kind of where it should be ideally for an acoustic guitar. That means that the, the, the bow in the neck has been removed to a point that fretting from the first fret to about the 14th fret allows the strings to act as a straight edge and it works pretty well. That being said, the strings are still pretty high up off of the fretboard. And I don't know if you can see that, but maybe with some B-roll, we can show you exactly how high up off of the fretboard the strings are. The reason that they're still high despite the fact that we've uh, taken the relief out of the neck has to do with the angle of the neck to the bridge and the height of the saddle. Now you actually want a tall saddle because this is where the vibrating tension of the strings goes through the top. And this is where quality higher end acoustic guitars, even something that's pr what made pretty well and something that's very budget really comes into play because you can't effectively change this. You can't take the neck off of this guitar and easily change the, the angle of it. Now you could, if you wanted to, take this in and you could have someone file down this saddle in order to possibly uh, improve that height of the strings. But if you do that, it's going to affect whatever tone this guitar has out of it, lessening the volume and the resonance of the guitar. And so, you know, ideally the neck angle should be right out of the box and I can side it down, the neck should be pointing at the top of the bridge and it's not. And so we know from out of the box, like many other guitars that are lower priced, the neck angles off. It's not like they've got a team of people who've been doing it for 30 years 
putting the neck joint in place. It's kind of a slap together thing. I mean, it's $139, so. Nevertheless, it actually looks pretty decent. And I think from the first drum, it sounds pretty decent. Now, here's the question that I have. For $139, you've just gotten an acoustic guitar from Amazon. There's no name on the headstock, but you could tape this inside, you know, put it inside there, and then you have your Amazon Basics guitar uh, for everybody to see. Um, but for $200, which is $60 more, you could get a Yamaha FG800. So this is not the debacle that our last Amazon guitar was so far. But how does it compare for a guitar with a guitar that just costs $60 more? We're going to find out. So there you have it, Amazon branded, Amazon basic acoustic guitar is actually not completely terrible. For $139, you do get what seems an okay built guitar that will get in tune, seems to so far stay in tune. But the question becomes now, it's a decent guitar for the money, but is it a good value? And I will have to say, I don't think so. My opinion, for $60 more, you could get this Yamaha FG800, which sounds so much better, it, mostly because it's a solid spruce top with scallop bracing versus this laminate spruce top with, I don't know, bracing. 
Um, and the feel is far superior. The finish, you can tell, is a thinner finish. The guitar is just more resonant. It feels better, the tuners are better. It's just overall a better instrument, which is why it costs more. Now, lots of retailers, lots of companies will try to make these packages in order to add value. And there is some value to that. For $139, you get this guitar, you also get a gig bag, you also get picks, a tuner, extra strings, that, and a strap that you do not get with the Yamaha guitar. But then that begs the question, how much is the guitar actually worth? What are you actually, if you just bought the guitar by itself, what would it cost, 100 bucks? You know, at 100 bucks, it's still, is it a good value for an instrument that's difficult to play and just doesn't sound as well as other guitars do? Ultimately, that's a question for you to decide. But one of the things that we've talked a lot about here amongst ourselves is that there's so many guitars who have a narrative of having a really bad instrument for their first guitar and laboring through those painful years trying to develop calluses and dealing with hand pain simply because the guitar was so terrible. That doesn't have to be your story. It was my story. That doesn't have to be your story. You can actually spend just a little bit more and get a far superior instrument. So keep that in mind. And by the way, you can buy this Yamaha on Amazon. You can buy it from our website at alamomusic.com, but you can buy it from us on Amazon as well. Um, so it's not like this is the only deal out there, but I will hand it to Amazon uh, for coming up with this basics that doesn't completely fall apart on you like that guitar we reviewed the last time. So it does have that going for it. Anyways, that's my take. I'm curious what you think about the guitar, the comparison, the value proposition, and also, just from a larger sense, what do you think about Amazon branding their own stuff? I've seen this guitar. I think there's pedals that keep coming in and out of their store. Amazon Basics taking over some of the lower end of the musical instrument market is interesting and maybe perhaps alarming. So give us your thoughts below. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe. Help us reach 100,000 subscribers soon. Many of you have done so. We really appreciate it. Uh, make sure that you like the videos because it helps others learn about the same content that we're doing that you are enjoying. Comment below and keep coming back for more. At the end of the, the day, I always say, the very best guitar is the one that you're playing. I just want you to keep playing, which is why I want you to start with a better instrument. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.